Dr. Wu, uh, thank you for joining us today at uh, Cranfield for Cam Best Practice Club. I uh, appreciate your, uh, your time. Thank you for inviting me. Pleasure. Um, could you give us a quick overview of the challenges and opportunities today trading with China? I think if we start with the opportunities, China is starting its first year of the 12th or 5th year business plan and with the new directions of the country in terms of where it go from here in its economic dimensions, it actually presents a huge range of new opportunities for British companies and, uh, and for business. Uh, for example, China is now moving away from export-driven economy, is now targeting to achieve trade balance, which means China is going to import far more than what it has done in the past. Um, to a degree that Chinese government is going to push out policies on subsidizing certain import, uh, making it easier to import product from the West, and it's going to help companies uh, to import from the UK or West, the other Western economy. The second opportunity is this going to create is this drive to expand the consumer market in China. We know in the past 10 years or so, China has been making things for the world. Now it is set uh, as it is on objective to create the consumer market uh, within China. So people are going to spend more, buy more, use more product, which present a great opportunity for many of the British branded products and, and services. Which lead me to the third uh, point about opportunities, because Chinese manufacturing is now up uh, on the top of the world in terms of what you can make, but in terms of the service industry, China still have a lot of catching up to do. And it is within this uh, uh, five-year business plan, they're going to hugely expand its service industries, which again, it match one of the strength of British companies. Um, as a result, it will have huge, huge implication for those companies who are willing to engage with the Chinese um, domestic market. Um, I can go on there, but th there's lots of other opportunity in terms of high tech, mm -hmm. low carbon technology, uh, um, energy efficiencies, as well as the financial industries in China, because China is also expanding in those areas as well. Uh, to, to give an example, for, uh, for example, China is becoming the th only third country in the world to, to manufacturing big passenger airplanes. And that, it is said, is going to create multi-billion pound business opportunities for those uh, people and companies who are involved in aerospace industry. Um, and I can make a list, a long list on those areas, but I think we are a bit short of time on that one. On that backdrop of those opportunities and challenges, what, uh, what changes must organizations uh, conduct to take advantage? I think if you look at uh, today's uh, theme of the seminar, which is key account management, mm. and compare with um, many of the big business from the UK or Europe who are operating in the China market, that one thing is clearly missing is the strategic thinking about where the opportunities are, how to, how to pinpoint those opportunities, and how to capture them. Mm -hmm. Quite often, you, uh, they, I'm going to talk about a case about which form of trading with China is better. Is it joint venture or is it what they call WOFI, the uh, wholly foreign-owned enterprise? Uh, mm -hmm. In China, there has been a rush to convert joint venture into wholly-owned foreign enterprises in China. Mm -hmm. but in the meanwhile, many of the European, com European companies in China are now starting to complain that um, the Chinese business environment is getting worse, which is completely in contrast to a, to a report by the World Bank this year, mm -hmm. that in the last five years, between 2006 and 2010, China has been the most improved uh, business uh, environment in the world. So mm -hmm. why is it such a difference uh, between the reality and the perception of some Western European countries operating in China. And I think very much the case, the reason for that is because this lack of strategic vision about where the opportunities are, where's the next uh, opportunity going to come from. In some way, most of these companies failed to predict what is going to come in China. Uh, and 
you cannot predict Chinese market change because the pace of change is so rapidly to a very precise um, a level, but you could actually read into a lot of strategic policies that the Chinese government and the market situation change to predict where the next uh, gap in the, op in the market is going to be an opportunity for you. But the failure of some of these big companies in terms of their key account management structure, um, the lack of uh, personnel who can look at both of the markets and both of the operations in China and the UK is, has resulted in many of those opportunities not being taken up. So if you were to advise one thing for organizations wanting to trade with uh, China, what, what would that be? I think for big companies, uh, the, the, following the theme of key account management, we really, look at, um, the, we really need to look at the issue that uh, if we actually are well equipped at our strategic decision making level, mm. that have people who can read into the Chinese market, either it's the market change or the government policies or whatever is going to come in the next five years. I think the market is highly predictable if you look at what the policy direction is or where the big projects are co coming from. On the other hand, for SMEs, and I think that's the area that um, uh, has been overlooked or neglected over the last 10 years, 99% of the UK business are SMEs. And those companies, especially the middle tier of the British business, actually have a great deal to offer to China market. If we are able to uh, galvanize, work together to support those SMEs to do more things in the China market, in return, it would actually benefit uh, the big business who are mm -hmm. operating in China as well. Thank you very much. Thank you.